Good evening, everyone. I'm hoping you are all staying safe. Uh, if you're in Utah, the snow is definitely coming down pretty crazy. So hopefully you're all nice and warm, cuddled up, and ready to do some art. Uh, I will be just streaming my screen today. I do have access to the chat, so feel free to uh, shout out any questions you have. If I went too fast, or if there's something that you'd like me to uh, specify more on, um, I'm going to be linking my reference, uh, where I found it on Pinterest, the photographer, and uh, also uh, the main account that posted it. So those will be up here just shortly. I'm going to type them up and also going to add a links for helpful tips and other places where you can find art resources to help your career along. So just give me one moment while I get that put together. Um, we are going to be working on creating a mythical creature, specifically a dragon, by using something that is already available. Now, dragons obviously come from, for me, like they're in every single culture that you can think of, uh, every part of the world, basically. And usually they come from fossils or other uh, creatures that people have found that uh, they couldn't explain. They didn't have the words to really explain it. So they created these fantastical beasts to fill the void of what they didn't know. Uh, usually if you don't know something, it can be a little scary. And so naturally they made these either ferocious beasts, if you look more into European <clears throat> culture, or uh, more spiritual and protective guiding forces, if you look in Asian culture. Now, for me, when I'm trying to make a dragon or some sort of illustration, usually what happens is I will be perusing Pinterest or another uh, social media site or something like that, and I'll see a photo that really sparks my interest. And I'll say, hey, you know what? I think I could make a dragon or a unicorn or even a griffin out of that. So for me, when I see this fusa, it screams dragon for me. So what I would like you to do, if you want to follow along and post your sketches uh, after or during uh, this stream, I gave you the links to the fusa along with uh, the other helpful links. Uh, just go ahead and get yourself a piece of paper, and we're just going to kind of have some fun with this. Now, usually, when I'm starting something, if I don't have an exact idea of what I want to do, I'll start with a thumbnail. This image is 5 inches by 6 inches. Now, when I do thumbnails, they're going to be really small, because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. And I want to make sure that uh, it's nothing, like, no time is wasted. It's just going to be super quick, super fast, and simple. So if you are going to make this into a dragon, I'd like you to do a small little thumbnail and see about uh, where you'd put the head. Where would you put the wings? What would it be on? Do you want to keep it a tree branch? Do you want it to be like at the entrance of a cave, etc. So I'm going to make a little thumbnail. And then I think I want to have the head up. Because dragons usually have a little bit longer of a neck. I love the fusa, but, you know, he's just a little bit too short of a neck. I like have dragons with really long necks. So I do this just really quick. Maybe I want the wings here. Maybe I want one up like this. Or I could change it and try having the head be down like this. Because I really, I love how this right here 
this shoulder of the fusa, these scapulas are just gorgeous. I love the shape that they make. So I might actually want to have that shape be there so that I can build off for where the wings go with this guy. So I can have the head down, have this beautifully placed uh, front leg right here. And then this one would be slightly hidden by his head. And you can go through, say, 20, sometimes even 30 renditions of a thumbnail, especially if it's something that I really, really want to get right. And I want to focus on the pose and the flow throughout the piece. Generally, you're going to want something to flow through your piece. And dragons are absolutely beautiful for showing flow. So if I wanted to show the flow that I'd have in this piece, I can have oh, use the red. I can have it flowing like this. Usually it's in kind of like an S shape. I can have the tail come up this way on this one. But finding those lines that flow through your piece and guide you is something that I really, really enjoy making. So say I want to do this one. After I make my two thumbnails, then I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a larger drawing of this piece. And sometimes it isn't quite as detailed as, say, the thumbnail but it still is kind of not very detailed. I'm just kind of getting the basic shapes. Now I'm liking the back leg but for my dragons, I usually don't have that long of the bottom leg. Shorten that just a little. Leg down. I love the paws of the fusa. They really look like they could be dragon paws. Remove the webbing and just keep it, uh, like, obviously a little less furry. And you can make that really just be a beautiful dragon paw. By taking what nature has already done, we can have something that is usually a myth or something that people don't think is real and make it seem like it's real. Anybody have any questions yet? Absolutely. Excellent, Jeff. You also don't have to do exactly what I'm drawing either. You can do your own version or you can follow along with what I'm doing. Uh, there is absolutely no right way to do this, honestly. We're just kind of having some fun. So now that I have a base drawing, this is a nice little pose. It's still extremely loose. I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn this layer down a little bit. So I can see it, but it's not going to interfere with me drawing in a new layer. And I'm going to shrink 
my pencil. I'm also using the, just, this is the basic brush that, or the basic pencil that comes with Procreate. So far, I have not used anything that doesn't come in Procreate. Uh, I was using an HB pencil. Usually, I like to use the 6B, and I'm going to swap to that now. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. That's super cute. Do you know what he's going to be on yet? Has anyone decided anything really fun and cool that they can put their dragon on? Oh, another cool thing about Procreate is if you go to Canvas Information, it will tell you how long uh, you've been on this piece. Obviously, I haven't been on it for 23 minutes. Uh, it also tracks the time when I was getting it prepped and putting it together. Um, most of my illustrations will usually take about 20 to 40, sometimes even 60 hours. Oh, I love that, Rowan. That's gorgeous. I love the face. So here's the tricky part. Is after you have the base drawing, is going in and refining it. Oftentimes I'll find after I do a thumbnail and then a better drawing of that, uh, that's usually when I'll start to lose the original idea because I'll realize what I did doesn't quite fit or it doesn't quite flow with how I think it should look. So that's one of the reasons I have a reference because I know that how the reference is is how I can have it in the drawing and it will look right rather than trying to reverse engineer it to a pose that I've made and try to make it look correct. Oh, hit a broccoli. <laughs> That's cute. And the bones. Lots of bones. So here is where uh, practice really helps. I've drawn a lot of dragons in my day. Um, for this head, one thing that I can do to help with it is I like to use greyhounds and whippets for faces. Now, I don't have this one set up for you, unfortunately. But you can also go quickly find a reference photo if you'd like. But if I was going to use this for a reference, uh, I love the expression the dogs have. There's something that makes, uh, there, there's just something about their expressions that just makes absolutely wonderful dragons. And they have the beautiful long muzzle. That really helps. So if I was going to use this guy for a face, that would be about how I would do it. Aren't they amazing? I love those dogs. Anything like beautiful and lean and just very sleek. They're just wonderful. And sometimes, like, I'll even do this multiple times. Like, I could be sketching on an idea and doing thumbnails all day, almost. Especially if I really wanted to try to get it right and to make sure that um, I go through all the possibilities. And sometimes I realize, you know what, that illustration or that um, reference didn't really work. And so I'll try to go find some more references that might actually fit 
my line of, of thought on it a little bit better. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. I love the color on that. Looks like bring that up a little bit more. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions on Procreate or any other digital programs? I normally use Procreate now. Um, However, I have used Photoshop, uh, Corel Painter. Um, there's so many wonderful programs that are available to artists now that we're able to use. Um, and so many amazing brushes as well. A lot of the brushes that I like to use are from Justin Gerard. If you join his Patreon uh, for as little as $10 a month, you can get access to all of his new brush sets that he creates for all of his original illustrations. Uh, you can also buy them on Gumroad. However, they are more expensive on Gumroad. Usually my drawings will do, or will take, Maybe a little bit longer than this. This is sped up a little bit, but usually I'm doing this traditionally more so than digitally, but this is definitely a lot easier to stream. So there is my base dragon. I can decide what else I want to put on him. As far as like what he's on, I'll probably keep it being a log. So definitely uh, recommend Justin Gerard's brushes. Uh, I have a ton. Um, there's plenty on Gumroad as well. But Justin Gerard's brushes are just so gorgeous. They have so much texture. Like they have the moss brushes. Uh, if I can. Just really beautiful textures. Uh, he has some scale brushes, too. I tend to like doing my own scale work. I don't use textures for that usually, but he does have, like, some uh, alligator skin. Uh, let's see. Mummy cloth. There's just... The sky's the limit on these, actually. But I generally use the basic ones that come in Procreate. I really like the acrylic and the wet acrylic along with uh, the inks. Um, let's see. So after I have this, I'm like, okay, I like how that looks. I still need to work on some of the anatomy right here, especially where it joins the body. Yes, definitely check those out. I absolutely love Justin's work.
Are there any other questions on my process or other creatures that I make? Uh, I am an open book. I can even show you some of my other uh, images in Procreate potentially as well. I can pull one up that I can show you the time lapse. The best one would probably be Watcher in the Mist. So after I have all of this put together, the scale layout is usually what I'd start next. After I make sure that everything is put together, it's in a good spot. Oh, that looks wonderful. Yes, definitely perfect with the puppy face. Super cute. Very wonderful horns, too. The little nubs. As I'm drawing the paws, uh, I'm making sure that I'm following along how the uh, paws are turned. On the Fusa paws, they're not all facing the same direction necessarily. Because the weights on them differently, they turn slightly. And the wings need a little bit more work. Uh, absolutely. I love listening to audiobooks. Um, I just barely finished uh, Annihilation. Um, and before that, it was Dracula. So usually I'm listening to some sort of audiobook while I'm working, if not a movie soundtrack, such as the one from Arrival. That's one of my favorites, Arrival or Interstellar. So now that I have this set up, I normally don't go through and add uh, references like this to my piece because I usually do scale work kind of like naturally, like I just go through and start doing it. But I'd like to show you my thought process behind doing the scale work. So paying attention to the form is the most important part. So here we have the eyelid right here, or rather the ridge that follows the eye. And we have another one below it. And since the eye is a sphere, it has this nice little pocket of skin right below it. So I want to make sure I mirror that on the dragon. I have the upper eye right here and the indent. The fusa has that as well. It's a little bit harder to see from this angle. Awesome. Those are also fun. I'm not usually as into those. Uh, definitely listen to fantasy audiobooks. However, I'm fresh out of uh, new ones to listen to right now. So that's been slightly sad for me. The next step is going to be the cross contour lines. And those are extremely important for building scales. Cross contour lines follow the form of whatever it is you're painting. So with the alligator tail here, it is round here at the top. It's flat. Basically on the top, it curves around and then it bows back out and loops under. So almost flat at the top, curves around and then bulges back out and then tucks under. So I want to make sure that I follow that thought process when I'm doing scales on this dragon. 
So to do that, we're going to start with the arm. You can kind of tell on the fusa with the planes right here, you can tell right on top of his foot, there's a light plane. You can see where the light's hitting all of his digits on his toes and on the top of his foot. So I know that here, it's going to be relatively flat. And then it's going to come down as it reaches the, in, the little crease right here. And then it's going to go back over. And by following those lines, this is how we create the base for our scales. Now, it's looking a little bit more like scales. Oh, <laughs> horror. I like it though, wonderful. I like the third eye too, that's excellent. Okay, so there is one leg done. You do the same on all of the other legs and on the head and everywhere else. This is my secret technique to doing scales. And I know it looks a lot just like big stripes right now, but what you do is after you have all of it put in, you can go through and start adding different layers of scales. So you can do cross scales, almost looks like fishnets, but that's not what we want. So if I do something that I don't like, usually I'll erase it or I can go back, but you can start adding in little bits like this. By following the form. And say I didn't like that line that I had made down the center, I'll just go ahead and erase it. As long as you have something that you're referencing based on reality in your piece, that's really what's going to make it go from well, that's a cool dragon to, oh my gosh, that's a really cool dragon that I could see flying in the sky. I could see it, you know, burning villages or just, you know, sitting out at the uh, neighborhood library, reading lots of books and hoarding knowledge. And there you have it. There is a paw, but these wings need some work. So I like to think of dragon wings basically like our arm. Here's the shoulder. Usually it's a little longer because of the muscle. And then you have the arm. And then you have the digits. A lot like your hand, just with elongated fingers. Sometimes I'll go ahead and stylize them like that a little bit, make them a little bit more round. But that's basically the shape of a dragon wing. So I need to go in and work on this guy a little bit more. And my layers usually get really messy but I'll usually merge them down as I go, as I get that looking how I want it.
This is one of my favorite ways to do unicorns as well with whippets and other um, really long, lean dogs. <laughs> Erasing a lot is totally fine. So now that I have it a lot more how I like it, I'm just going to go ahead and collapse a bunch of the layers and lighten it up a little bit. Now, for the most part, that's a pretty decent dragon. We haven't been working on it for very long. We have a wonderful reference that we're going off of. Is there anything else that you guys would like to see added to this? Are there any other creatures that you'd like to see me work on? Let's see. Here is some of the pieces that I've been working on. Um, let's see. This is one piece that I'm working on for the 78 tarot to give you a little bit of a better idea of what my flow actually works like. Nope, not. Here we go. So it starts with the sketch that I import in. We can excellent that's an excellent question or statement. We can definitely work on backgrounds. For this piece, I just basically took a photo of my drawing, and the drawings are very small. The drawings are like they're bigger than a thumbnail. The drawing for this was, I think, like maybe two by three. And you don't need a really nice scan or anything of it. You can definitely take a photo with it just with your phone, making sure it's relatively clear, and import it into any digital program, or you can print it out and paint on top of it after you seal it with either uh, watercolors or acrylics. Oh, I can definitely add a dryad too. Now, this is all done usually in black and white first. Uh, if you've heard any of my other panel in my work process, it's all black and white. And then I add color on top of it. Even when I'm doing a oil painting, uh, I'll do either a grisaille or a brunei. And, and as you can see, I'm just kind of slowly playing with the values. And then I add, and then I play with the values some more. And I'm adding lots of colors with different multiple uh, techniques to get the uh -huh. um, As far as the background on this piece, I usually was, or any background in general, I'll just be looking at photos that I have, references of um, blocks or anything else like that. Uh, this was a sketch that I did the other weekend. Uh, last weekend, I believe, actually. And what I do is sometimes I'll try to test it out with different backgrounds, just a photo that I've taken, just to see if I like the color or the way it looks. I had a hard time deciding with this one uh, what I wanted. I messed around with it quite a lot. I usually go through a lot of different blending layers to try to see exactly and play with the image without really having a specific direction about it. Grisai and Brunei are this. Uh, this right here 
is a grisaille. It is a image that is pure uh, value. There is no color. Uh, it's black, gray, and white, basically. Uh, so it's the lights, the midtones, and the darks. With a Brunei, it would be an underpainting that has a brown tint to it. So if I wanted to have a warmer tone on this painting below it, I could go for a little bit of a brown color and tone the painting when I do the value. This can change the way the colors read that you add on top, especially transparent colors, uh, because the color that's below it will show through. And if I'm just playing around and messing with colors, I can just go through all of these and just kind of see what ones I like, what I don't like. I really liked the idea of the warm colors seeping through with this piece. So that's what I used for my base. Um, Let's see if I can, I'll use this textured background a lot of the times. So this is a textured background. I'd need to save it out because I deleted it from my library. But what I would do is I'd save this out and I'd pull it in to my image like I did on this one, I believe. Oh, I went back with it, but um, looks like I merged all up and mess with the settings to just kind of add more texture, make it a little bit warmer or cooler. I can edit that original image to make it look uh, more blue if I really didn't like how warm it was. See, think I have that on this one too. So with this image, I've been really been going through and kind of playing with the different colors on this. I still haven't decided what colors and what what uh, mood I wanted to get from this piece. However, if I'm really stuck and I found out that I've overdone it with my colors, I will merge everything. And what you can do is you can duplicate your image, go in and change the saturation. You're going to desaturate the entire image, put this image on top and set it to color, and it is going to look exactly like the original image. And this way, you can go in and you can edit this illustration without changing the actual colors that are on top. So if I wanted to start adding more scale detail to this piece, I can go in and Start adding more detail and scale pattern without needing to match the colors that are on top. And this is usually how I will edit my illustrations. And I will go back and forth between the color version and the black and white version. Because I know that if I have the black and white how it needs to be, everything else will look good once I put color over it. And sometimes I will merge them together again and add more opaque colors on it. Uh, it just kind of depends. My favorite one one of, one of my favorite ones, I should say, is uh, this guy, actually. So when I am working on him, he took me... Oh, this is the other one. It doesn't have the full file in it. 
but he t- took me probably about 20 to 30 hours to actually compete complete his video is not set up though um, but that's also how I did Genesis. So if you look at the video for Genesis, originally it was just a black and white sketch, and I went in and I added the value that I wanted to have. Uh, this is really easy to do scale texture in black and white. This panel went by fast. Oh my gosh. Is there anything else that you guys want to uh, hear from me about, about my work process, um, where I get my inspiration from, or anything else like that? So here you can tell I, so I have the basics of my values put together and then it switches real quick. There's that textured background that I lay on top to change the uh, layer properties with. I try cool, I try warm and just kind of go back and forth. I found one that I liked, but then I wanted to work more on the value of the piece. So I hop back and forth between each of those, trying to get the right color scheme that I want. And once I have the right value and the color scheme, then I can start really going in and finessing the piece and really popping those colors. I wanted to have the orange on this piece. I really wanted to keep it subtle with the uh, hints of really bright, vibrant colors staying where the eye was because I knew that's where I wanted the focus on the head of the dragon and where the eye was. So I have two spots with the brightest color, which is going to be the eye, and the next would be the flower. So the main points that people are going to look at is the face and the flower. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. Do it. I absolutely do it all the time. Um, I love taking animals that people wouldn't think would be a dragon. Uh, one that I have actually is I turned a very, very, very chubby frog into a dragon. Uh, let's see. It was... This guy. So, basically, this frog just screamed dragon sitting on a branch for me. So, I added wings here and a neck. And he actually ended up being one of my favorite uh, drawings, or rather illustrations, which was... guy. If you'll add. Doesn't want to be added, but uh, Perpetual Maelstrom is one that started as this little froggy guy, and he ended up turning into this guy. Fortunately, it's not wanting to load. Maybe I can pull. Looks like we got about another two minutes. That is a very, very cute cat. I haven't done a cat dragon recently. So that, that froggy guy turned into this guy. And you can see how that hump right here on a shoulder where the frog was. I wonder if we can line it up. Mm. 
Also, I have a mermaid uh, one in there that I absolutely love. But basically, you can see the hump here and how it translates to the hump here on the dragon, the other hump here for the eye, how the chest comes out, and also how the arm is positioned. And that was how I did that. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, and this is my last panel, so I am incredibly sad, but glad that I was able to hang out with you guys.